Welcome back everyone to Let's Play World Waves 2 as Austria-Hungary, episode number something, 58, I don't know. Okay, so here we go, moving into the carrier, aircraft, even anti-ship missiles. Pretty soon we'll have uh, surface-to-air missiles, I think. All kinds of exciting things. We got our fire control radar now, um, so our battleships will be incredibly effective, and that does kind of makes speed important because with fire control if we can get close enough any in, in range at all of their carriers will decimate them that also makes heavy cruisers kind of interesting because if they don't have um it, it, i mean you'd have to make these things so fast but i don't know there's something to be said about making heavy cruisers which can get close enough to the carriers fast enough to destroy them Unfortunately, with the aircraft range increasing as the game goes on, I think that the starting distances also tend to increase, which means the distance you'd have to go is, is usually too much to overcome. But anyway, um, let's see. We had a design. I think we had a design under construction. Yeah. Okay, so we have these two, which is great. And they're only 12 months away. They're fantastic ships. I'm really looking forward to them. Uh, 27, I've been corrected that apparently 27 is the minimum speed for the fast battleships. Um, with the person saying, though, that if you do happen to have an unlucky roll and your ship is slower than, you know, slower than expected by one knot, apparently, I'm not, this I haven't confirmed, but apparently having a ship at 27 design, but then having it actually at 26 makes it lose that. So 28 would be the, the conservative amount. Knowing that, I might actually start making some battleships at 27 anyway. The chance of it being rolled unsuccessfully, well, it depends on the nation. For the United States, you'd almost guarantee it wouldn't be that way. But, you know, you could get unlucky, especially with Austria-Hungary. I'm sure, like, Russia could fall victim to that. Um, okay, anyway, well, we have some, some fun times ahead of us. It's all going to be aircraft-oriented here. And actually, that's not really fun. But, hey, part of me thinks that even though I don't like the fact that we aren't going to be in control of those aircraft, the land-based aircraft are kind of a nice compromise where since you don't control them, they don't burden you with having to order the airstrikes and all that. Uh, I do find, I don't know why, it, it, I know it's not that much overhead, but I just find that little bit, like one minute to the, the one minute of game time, I'm not saying real lifetime, in real lifetime it can take minutes even if you're slow like I am. Oh, wow, our monthly balance changed by a whole bunch, too. What happened? Reserve fleet, active fleet. Anyway, the the one minute that you pause um, to like launch your strikes can take a little bit of time, and it disrupts the flow of the game for me um, because it's not on my terms. Sometimes I'll pause in the middle of a battle, and I'll just contemplate things, but obviously that's me just sitting and contemplating things. It's my, I'm taking that time myself intentionally to just think. But when the game has like introduces this, uh, you know, okay, we need to click, 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 click on the different groups. Then we need to hit select their, their like um, medium load, heavy load, and then or torpedo load, and then prepare them. I don't know. Yeah, I guess it's not that much. Monthly balance is, is bouncing around a fair amount here. A new cruiser from France has just arrived on a goodwill visit, and the press is eagerly reporting all of its advanced features. A reporter approaches you for comment. Okay, so France. We would be happy to go to war with France. I don't... Yeah, prestige and tension might be what we want here, even though the budget up is always nice. I think it's actually less important than the tension. Okay. New flying boats are ready, and are they better? The answer is yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, in every way. Holy cow, this range is something insane. Look at this range. The heavy load is 700. That's ex like exceptional. Now, obviously 700 range at only 158 knots is going to take them a long time. <laughs> if it's 158 knots, that's 158 you know, nautical miles per hour. And if they're going to do 700, if their range is 700, I mean, am I reading this correctly? Does this mean that it'll take them 
like four hours to get to their target? How would they even like get know where their target is? <laughs> And it was a fantastic idea for us to do this, not only because the reliability is low, but this is probably the last flying boat we'll need for, you know, a long time, maybe even ever. I am hard pressed not to choose the bottom of these two. The disadvantage, it has slightly lower speed. The max speed is not that important for flying boats. They're not going to be, their max speed is so low compared to fighters at this point, it probably doesn't matter. The cruise speed is a little more important. One knot on that, I just can't see that making much of a difference. We have higher maneuverability, and the range is obviously much higher. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the Berg 159. Again, the higher numbers is better anyway, right? That's a joke. All right, another aircraft. What do we want next? Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's obsolete the old flying boat. It just it can't be worse. The new one can't be worse. We have a flying, uh, a float plane scout, I should say, with only average reliability. That is something I would probably like to address. The It is the oldest plane in our fleet now, and we do make use of these float plane scouts a fair amount. Let's go ahead and do that one next. Um, speed is just, it's always there, right? Range might actually be a consideration. I, I expect that the range in five years or so has just gone up so that I don't need to really do this. Because I would prefer to take reliability. Um, it is kind of a tough one though. I wonder if I could just choose speed and speed because in my opinion, the them getting that information back to you is just really important. I think actually reliability, yeah, this is tough. I am torn between speed reliability and toughness. The main job this float plane scout needs to accomplish, it has to report back the positions of the enemy fleet to us. It can do that faster, which is good. It can do that by surviving cap and still moving on, which is good. And it can be available for the mission at all, reliability. I don't know uh, how impactful reliability is. <clears throat> so the main problem with, I mean, the, the real difficulty float plane scouts encounter is if you don't have the, the hangers for them. We do have the hangers for them, I think on all our ships, I've been doing it. I don't know how much reliability plays a part uh, after that, because you can see there's missions where like maybe only one or two torpedo bombers are missing from a group of 15, which means if that's the general, if that's what good reliability means for a hangered aircraft, then maybe we don't need to focus on reliability. Still, it was the lowest thing. I think I'm just gonna go with double speed. If we know which float plane scout gets shot down, we can kind of know where the enemy is. Ah, I have a hard time doing that though. Like I don't really have a secondary priority, just speed and then everything. I kind of like would choose everything for the second priority, which is probably the same as just choosing speed twice. Yeah, I'm not, I just don't know exactly how this works. How the Does the float plane scout roll a max total points and then those are distributed by the priority? This is the game mechanics, obviously, but it is something I, I need to consider since we're playing a game, right? Um, or is the, are these priorities like upgrades to those special, you know, particular categories which will exceed the initial roll of points? Good questions. We don't know. Okay, I guess I'll go with, hmm. I don't also know how reliability impacts things, like impacts, this is an appropriate word, for like landings and all that. Is reliability associated with their ability to quickly go out again? I don't know, I think that speed, I'm gonna do double speed. This be a, just a, an experiment. Okay, we got an improved dive bomber. This has slightly better bomb load, which is perfect. Basically, it was the main shortcoming of our dive bomber. I will go to aircraft types and we'll probably trim off the... Oh, yeah, they've already trimmed it off. So the old one is now obsolete. Very appropriate since it's just worse in every way, obviously, than the successor. All right, two medium bombers. Do we have a, <clears throat> a 
I thought about these. Like, what what's going on here? This one carries torpedoes. This one doesn't. Um, slight more more or less the same range. This one's faster. Okay, I think after we get our float plane scout, the next thing we'll do is a medium bomber, and then probably a fighter after that, just so we have it just in time for the war. In theory, that's the way I would do it. Okay, they're working up, and I forgot that we need to go out and cancel. Okay, carrier force, carriers will operate in separate force. That's good. Um, improved torpedo bomber. All right, good. I mean, the original one was already really good. So this is, <laughs> this is fantastic. And it has both better speed and better range. The bomb load on this is just very impressive. So that's, that's great. I mean, we put so much research, um, time and effort into the research. I, I would love it if somehow, yeah, I would love it if somehow that was, if we could like get ahead on aircraft research because we are putting so much time and effort into it. Maybe that's just not the way it's supposed to work. Like historically, if Austria Hungary was trying to pit, like was really trying to develop planes and, and all that, would they have had the resources, intelligence, I don't know, like breakthroughs, um, would the environment have been conducive to designers that cr could create top-notch aircraft? I don't know, because we obviously see very good aircraft coming out of Germany. We also see those, I mean, but why is that? Is it because of the, yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of assume actually that, yeah, if you built up a culture, if you put a lot of money into aircraft research for like 20 years, which we have, you would start rising to the top. And let's see. I guess what I should do is take a look at our air bases. Is this, I don't know if I want to sort. I better leave it at, by land so we can see. Okay, Belfast has 40, Cork has 100. I should also check that everyone who has, that everyone's at max. Okay, everyone is at their max. So that makes it a lot easier to determine. Like What I see here is what I get. Okay, so Iceland has 100, Cork has 100, that's good. Belfast probably doesn't need 100. I think Cork is the main spot we get things from. Cork is absolutely the place we get the most activity from. I could even consider, I think I could consider even scrapping the Belfast. I don't know if I've ever had a battle up in this area. I get a lot of battles in between Cork and Plymouth though, a lot. So using that knowledge, um, I don't, I feel like, can we, yeah, okay, they're at max size. So 100 is the max size. I like Malta having the max size base. Alexandria having a 60 is probably okay. Gibraltar having 100 is fine. Cyprus, probably not important. This is good, this is good, and Kataro is good. Kataro's the one like way down here, right? Yeah. Hmm. Oh my, I completely forgot what I was saying. Had to cut away for a little bit there. Yeah, we were talking about the airplanes, I think. Kataro is, yeah, this is like, it's the main place. If I could make Kataro any bigger, I should. I can't, so we'll leave it as it is, but maybe I should also add Spilato. Like if we're gonna go up against Italy, which is in theory the plan, then that would be really useful. Actually, it would be pretty useful for us to have, let me saw, I don't really see it. It's kind of hard for me to imagine that many, like how much effect air, uh, aircraft and Limassol will be. And the downside of aircraft is that they're only stationed there. They're like coastal batteries, you know? They don't move as the fleet does. They're not mobile. Um, obviously, aircraft carriers are, so there's a little bit of a trade-off here. If only aircraft weren't so expensive, we wouldn't have to penny pinch about where, what places are going to get bases. But that is not the case. Yes, Bellotto, it, it's, I could be convinced. I mean, naval aircraft are pretty expensive.
what's cool is our we have more single engine than multi engine. I guess that's mostly mostly because of the aircraft carriers. Okay, airships you could see there cost twenty per maintenance, but I, they probably actually are worth it for that. Mm, yeah, next turn. Okay, well we just built our aircraft carrier. Did I build it? I did. Angled flight deck, even better. I kind of want to even just design one. We could actually not just design. We could just we could go with it. Do they? Is there any? Can you? Where is the angled flight deck option? Having never built one, I don't know. They look at they have like the catapults built in. What? Look at this. <laughs> anyway, uh, they have the catapults built into this one. We'll definitely add it for us. I'm not sure if we're gonna actually build this thing, but oh my god, forty-five thousand. We can build aircraft carriers up. I am. That is insane. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Again, this age-old thing where we don't need that much speed because it'll just be wasted. I could see 27. That's something I could I could live with. Oh, it's long range. That's interesting. Interesting. Also, this belt. What the heck are they thinking? Probably do three and three, two and two. Um, dual purpose fight. Okay. Well, I'm not sure. Okay, th this is fine. Uh, we'll we'll figure the rest of this out. We're actually wow, really really positive on weight after doing all those reductions. Diesel gives us more w weight remaining. Awesome. Unit machinery. Inclined belt. Two point five. Two point five. Why not? We'll probably cut down the the size a little bit, but again, size also. I mean, size size matters. <laughs> um, yeah, because we get more surface weight, uh, more surface. One sixty electrocopical five inch dual purpose. Fifty eight, not bad. Take this down until we get the space available. I'll take one, yeah, we'll do this, this is fine. Oh my gosh, I, lo I love this thing. I want to build it now, but I don't know how the angled flight deck is. Okay, I need to go back, or you guys can go back hopefully on the, what does it mean basically? What does it mean angled flight deck? Is it abstracted or are you, I would imagine it's such a big design feature you would have to toggle it. It can't be can be given to old aircraft carriers. I mean, unless they wanted, like, I guess a refit that just completely redecked it. In that case, you could. Very cool, though. We have diesel. I mean, look at all this weight remaining. I mean, I guess what would happen from here is we would either decide to increase the air capacity, which I don't like. Uh, increase the speed. I mean, what, what, what would you do? What would you do? Oh, I know. Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, I know. All right, so this is actually four inches of deck armor now. Oh, it's okay, wow, it's really cool. It's a really cool design. It only costs 3.7 million, or sorry, 3.7 thousand a turn which we can't afford now, but we very, very soon will be able to. I think we'll wait. I, I don't know if I'll save this. Let me see if I can cut, if there's a name that jumps out. Draken's good, but we already have the, a, a Draken-ish. Yeah, we have the Trago Draken, so, which is just Lightning Dragon. Let me, uh, yeah, let me pick a different name. Okay, well, according to the submission at least, Technos is the Hungarian word for Tortuga. 
I have no grounds on which to challenge this claim, so I will accept it as our temporary name for an aircraft carrier that may never be built. But we had a little fun designing her. That's. No, I don't want to start the design. Just save her and leave it at that. We'll come back to her. I mean, if nothing else, we'll come back to her in, wow, six months, basically. It's pretty much time to start building her now. I mean, part of me is still toying with the idea of getting like a super fast either cruiser or, well, a cruiser. Either heavy cruiser or light cruiser, which is capable of like charging the enemy. The problem is if they have any battleships, it won't be good enough. And that's what I keep falling back to is in the rock, paper, scissors of things, you don't want to send a heavy cruiser out of battleship. And all they need to do is keep their battleship near their carriers and then I, this fleet can, will just get picked apart by aircraft. I also just let you know, I renamed this was Maximilian von Tegethoff. And I, I think it was um, spelled slightly incorrectly. So I, I renamed this, I think this is now correct. Um, Wilhelm von Tegethoff, an Austro-Hungarian uh, admiral. And we may have m numerous other misspellings or whatnots in here. Maybe uh, Tegethoff was already, no, wasn't already a ship. Okay, good. Um, let's move on. Wow, USA wants some alliance. Okay, I think we'll do this. I don't have any idea what they will contribute in a war. Oh my gosh, international, no! I have spent way too long on my two fine battleships. We can do a disarmament treaty as soon as I get these last two battleships, then feel free. But until then, no, no way, not a chance. Yeah, I don't know if I like these two battleships. They're so old. Actually, yeah, when we looked at it before, they're still really effective. This is just tough. We we can sacrifice the budget, but what does the United States bring for us? Besides 10 battleships, this number is dropping. I think they're scrapping, oh my gosh, 26. If I could get into a battle with their carriers involved, okay, I think it's worth it. I think that is worth it, because if we're able to get their carriers into the same into the battle with us, their carriers, well, they have a lot of them. I don't know. Better armor quality, a potential improvement in the dive armor. My goodness, this is better. Eh, not really. Bomb load is worse. So it has faster speed, it has much longer range, but all that is probably because it's carrying a lighter bomb load. I don't think we're gonna take this one. I like the speed obviously, but um, that extra bomb load is, I think what I'm gonna rely on. What? Wow, tensions with Germany just skyrocketed for reasons completely unknown to me. But hey, that's fine. We should do a fleet exercise as well at some point. Get our guys back off this fair condition. Back into ready shape. Let's put you under reserve fleet as well. Okay, alright. So we're doing really good with this budget. Yeah, but I have to remember that once we go to war, the budget's just going to crash. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm putting down my glasses. I can't think, oh my gosh. You gotta be kidding me. I wish I had that Tortuga one. I need to look at my own ship. <laughs> what the heck? Should I do it? 
do catapults. Speed of 27, 32,000. 38 medium, 33 light, 16 five inch dual purpose. Oh, it's gonna be expensive because the one thing I haven't factored into the budget, which means that I should, I will not soon be able to afford any of this, any of these things I'm thinking of. We have to um, budget for the massive increase in in uh, spending because we're gonna need to, like every carrier we build is a hundred aircraft, and a hundred aircraft is at a minimum eight hundred maintenance a month, which is insane. Just tons of money. I don't know why I haven't thought of that, but I have been completely neglecting the fact that we need to actually pay for aircraft. So, I may still accept this though, because it's just such a great offer. No, we can't name it Draken. Ah, no, 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 there was another one, one sec. Great, um, when I see a familiar name, that's always awesome. So Donnerschlag from Grey Wiz, who I've seen in the comments many a time. So there's there's a ship for you. Oh my gosh, we're going to war with Germany. Our ship has been blown up in Valletta. And by the way, that's a hell of a job for them to sabotage something in Valletta. Like, <laughs> it's pretty easy to tell who's going in and out. It's a con an isolated island. Can't just sneak across the border or something. You gotta go out on a boat. Anyway, we can, oh my gosh, we can just go right to war. Okay. No. Oh, yep, that's, that's it. So mobilize everybody. Activate air, oh my goodness. Good thing we have a small budget available. Two to three months, oh my gosh, they might they might get into the fight. Okay, so first things first, we have to start invasions. I highly doubt that the Germans have any fleets down here. They have two heavy cruisers, yes, this is perfect time. Where would we rather invade? I think this area is more difficult for us to control. And I think that they might actually have more. Yes, yeah, so we need to set an invasion target. Not the Mediterranean, let me zoom out, see if I can get it there, there vision target, which is going to increase our money even more. Okay, this is great though. I'm just, this is, I think, a very good turn of events. We are allied to the United States, so let me take my intel down to low or none with them, just because um, there's no reason in, no reason to annoy them, to piss them off. We don't really need intel high with uh, Italy since tensions will be reset after the war. And that's the only reason why we were doing that was to kind of provoke them. Yeah, that did, that just really that heated up very quickly, huh? Caught everyone with their pants down, I'm sure. But here we go. We have we have a good number of ships ready to go. That's right. We don't have aircraft, so let me actually get some aircraft on Arrow. Okay, good. So let's just take a look at the template we have over here. We have 40 fighters. I'm guessing, I don't, uh, there it is, 40 fighters. I think this exact template is just fine. So it's 40, 30, and 30, and I like it. So we'll paste that same template here. And we'll wait for them to actually get some crew. It'll be a while, that's fine. Three more months until, so we didn't actually get a new fighter, but eh, hopefully it's okay. Um, let's go to unrestricted, especially because tensions are so low. I don't imagine these submarines will last that long. How many do we have left? 53, that's a decent number. We can probably put some, put the hurt on. And we also need to f change some things up as far as who's patrolling where. So let me send my Nikes up into, so Nikes, 30, yeah, everyone's at speed 30. I need somebody who can run away, right? I think I will send my, I sent the Hussars up there last time, and that might not be a bad idea. They all have 24 four inch dual purpose guns, so it's not like there's a benefit from that perspective. 
of sending the Hussars versus the Nikes. Um, nine and seven for the Nikes. Nineteen to gray. So the Nikes will be more vulnerable to air. I think I'm still gonna do it. I think I'm gonna send the. Yeah, let's send these guys. They're a little bit less vulnerable to air. I did it last time, and honestly, I, I just kind of trust myself. I can't really, like looking at it now, it's like six one way, half dozen the other. But the fact that I sent the, them last time means that good old Tortuga from the past must have known what he was doing, right? All right, who follows them up there? Oh, well, we did not have a chance, unfortunately, to get any destroyers which I have several short range ones. None of them will be able to move up there, which is unfortunate, but the Rashers are not short range and they can move up there. So we'll just move them. And they have a speed of 32, so they're you know still two knots faster. <laughs> Good. And I might put the Hussars on raiding even, just to really squeeze the Germans. We only have 10 months of funding, but I think that that'll clear up. Well, it'll clear up in three months. Okay, how exciting. Uh, is there anything else I need to be doing? Active fleet. We active fleet everyone. Arrow's working up, so that's good. She won't be put into the fight yet. She also has no aircraft, so there's, there's that. Yeah, let's just wait a month. Oh, yeah, there it is. I knew there was something I was missing. So these are these are minesweepers. We'll get some of those on trade protection. Get some of these guys on trade protection. Let me just grab not everyone but two. We're already set and we have plenty more people who can who can assist. Trade protection. Do a little bit of trade protection up in uh, Northern Europe as well. Um, more trade protection, I think. Okay, I, I prefer to double the amount. If I can do that, I will be happy. And then you guys will just all go to trade protection. Okay, good. So there we go. We doubled it and a little bit more. We have some really nice destroyers out. 1900? Jeez. Oh, of course. <laughs> no, I'm not going there. <laughs> like, no. Okay, 4 inch auto loaded dual purpose guns. Can't wait for that to get to the 5 inch ones. So, good start for us. We actually lost 10, so. Wow, that's a lot for ASW, even though we have pretty sizable ASW. Let me take a look at that Almanac. What do they have? Wow, they only have 27 submarines. That, that, I, I'm just guessing that was going to be a lucky month for them. Seems like it must have been. They have yeah, about 30% more aircraft than us. That's a little bit worrying. Oh my gosh, battleship engagement invading. Oh my gosh, yes! Now this is this is the cool one. Oh my gosh, it's it's so perfect that I I will start off the first minute because I don't know if the game does it properly if you don't have this all set up. So let me at least get this set up. Should be my carrier force, I'm guessing. Is this a scout force? Oh my gosh, what is going on? Okay, we have a main force. We have coastal force, which is just batteries. We have a scout force and we have a carrier force. Okay, I want the carrier force. It's, okay, okay, what do we have here? Which ones are these? The Turan, which are a little bit old. They're all Turan. Now we have one Trogger Draken. Well, we have, Oh my gosh, we we have six aircraft carriers in this. Good lord. Germany has eight aircraft carriers total. There's, oh, but they have the land base. 
we're going up against a land base which is going to have aircraft of its own. So I need to make sure we go on very heavy cap. And yeah, let's let's take a look here. We do not need that range. Probably just need to cover the island. I'll go to 180 just beyond it. This can go up. I don't think I need to cover that far right actually. So I'm gonna go to like 15. Sorry, let's do one, five, zero there. That seems good to me. Two-phase search, sure. Maybe even a little bit. Yeah, Ooh, 295 would be, oops. Nine five would be probably, yeah, I probably should just go to 305. The thing is there could be somebody waiting out there, so I, I just wish we could shift everything so it wasn't every 20 degrees. The thing I would really hate is if we missed a plane in this area just because we didn't shift things correctly. In fact, it might even be cool. I mean, we can do this. You can manually set up a, a recon flight. This is just not going to help anything though, so I guess what we'll do is just set it at 302. Oh, brother. 302. Or 303. Um, that's going to be the best I think we can do. That looks pretty good. I think this is a sufficient. Maybe I'll go up to 190. I, I mean, they could be back there somewhere. So let me hit OK on that. Let me also go over here, because are these guys also on their own scout? Yeah, they are. Maximum cap, two-phase search, distance drop down to maybe 230 is actually looking good. So I don't think that that far left is important. I could see myself doing something like this, though, just to make sure there's nobody directly west of us. And right. I don't know. Maybe split the difference and go zero, three, three, zero, three, three, five. Three, three, three. Yeah, we'll just leave it like this. Two phase search, okay. Now we also technically have, I don't know if this counts as a second group. What do we have by the way? Oh, we have the whole group and the Radetzky's leading the charge. And we have the Farkas class, which is the closest thing I have to that heavy cruiser who can charge ahead and kind of take care of itself. But this group may have its own scouting group, since the carrier group is technically separate. It is. Oh my gosh. So this is all, this has got to be more important. Let these guys scout as much as possible because um, this is just float planes. We almost don't want them coming back too, too early. Although, let's do 290. Zero. That's fine. I'll do that. And let's break it out a little bit further. I don't think that that, I feel like that is that is too far though. So let's do 15 instead. One, five. That still seems like too much. One, zero. Okay, we'll do one, zero. This will be good coverage. Maximum cap, I don't think it matters, but two phase search. Okay. Then we gotta make sure we, oh man, there's so many things I gotta for, you know, make sure we don't forget to do. And this is why aircraft is pretty annoying. <laughs> I think it is a lot of work. Let's get everybody ready to go. Oh, what's your medium range, light range? Heavy is 300 for everyone, minimum of 290. So that's gonna be, we have enough range. We can do heavy loads for everyone. In which case, of course we will. And most of these are gonna be the 1,000 pound bombs, but a few of these are gonna be, eh? I take it back. I thought that the Aviatic 147, what, I thought we had two dive bombers and one was the upgraded version of the other, which had the 16, I know we have, we're supposed to have the 1,200 pound bombs, but 
We, we forgot to order them. So, no, no, yeah, 1400, the MAG 157B. So the MAG 157B exists only in one group in, in, well, in this carrier division. Oh gosh, I gotta go through all of them. Yeah, this is a hassle. <laughs> Let's ready this strike though. Okay, that's fine. Go to the next one. Go to... I'll strike. I was hoping that that would just get all the attackers. They're all heavy. Why do we only have two heavies? Are we missing some dive bombers here? What is going on? Do, do these guys have a different loadout? Why do they not have dive bombers? I'll probably have to check back next minute and they might have them. Anyway, this is good. Let's just ready this strike. Let's hope that works and go to one more. Okay, there's two dive bombers. That's good. Three torpedo bombers. We want uh, only one more. So this is this is the strangest thing yet. <laughs> now there's three dive bombers and four torpedo bombers. We're expecting four and four. We have had two and four, three and four, and, not, and four and four. Go figure. All heavy and just ready to strike. I, I guess we don't need to tell them the location until they're leaving, right? I hope. Just ready to strike for now. And they're getting ready. I'm gonna let the fighters do cap and all that. Although, you know, in this kind of attack, it wouldn't be necessarily the worst thing to have some kind of cap. I mean, we have six carriers. So I imagine that some cap is gonna be essential. We also wanna take a look at the daytime. It is a long time before night, which is good to see. So that's where we'll call this video to a close though. Yeah, so it'll be exciting. I guess I'll go one exactly one minute forward to get the battle underway. A yes to all would be great here. And have we gone one minute? One time elapsed is one. Good enough for me. Okay, that's it. Then we'll bring this one back in the next episode. Till then, thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.